Okay, let's talk about our offensive principles now, uh, which we call, basically it's the read and react offense. And we have two types of sets. One is called a 50, which is five players outside the three-point line, which I'll show you in a little bit. And then we have another set called 41, which is four players outside the line uh, with one post player. For this video, we're going to focus on the 50 set. And the whole concept between this offense is we want the kids to be just playing the game and reading and reacting to the defense as opposed to remembering specifically where to run. So it's an offense that's based on principles rather and rules rather than specific places to go to or run to. And so we're going to show this in a diagram here, but just looking at the screen, we can see in the words some of the key principles. One of the first things is when we catch the ball, we square up, and we're always looking to attack first. We're not looking to just pass the ball around. We're looking to catch, square up, and either shoot or attack before we decide to pass. We'll go through the pass and cut through, and then we'll go through some pass and pick away options. You have a curl option, a slip option, and a flare. And as we pass, we're always cutting and then filling the open spot, which we'll show you. So it's basically pass and cut or pass and pick and fill. Those are the concepts. And we have a couple other rules where if we're, always, if we're ever being overplayed, we make an immediate backdoor cut. And if we're ever uh, dribbled at by our teammate, we make a backdoor cut. And then there are a couple other prin uh, principles that we'll talk about uh, here in a, a little bit. So let's see what it looks like on the basketball court. So we have, as you can see, five players outside the three-point line. And in fact, they have to be not touching the three-point line. They have to be all the way outside um, because the three-point line is a key part of our, our offense. So if the player here, number one, let's just say they can't drive, so they're going to make a pass over here to number three, then their job on a pass and cut is to make a V cut away from the ball and then come back cutting through as we look to make that pass. If we can make that pass, we have a layup. Once they've made that cut through, if they're not open, then everybody rotates to the open spot. So you can see that number two will rotate up, number four will rotate up here onto the wing, and number one will fill that empty spot. So if uh, three passes to two, they make that V cut, come back, looking for the ball right here. We're looking to get it to them. Five fills the open spot, and three comes to the wing. Ball goes over to four. We make a V cut, come back to the ball, lane side here looking for the ball. Don't get it. We fill. Continue to fill. Three fills and two fills. Ball goes to the corner. Make a cut, go through. Five is filling, three is filling, two is filling, and four fills here. Now let's put some defense in, and let's assume that we um, have a situation where we're being overplayed. So we'll, we'll only put four defenders uh, for now on there. And let's put the ball back at the top. And here's the principle. So... Um, the principle here is, as we look to make a pass to number two over here, if two reads three, the defender, if the defender is not touching the three-point line, so if they're playing back, then we make that pass, and then we would cut through. And like we discussed, five would be filling. However, let's say that three is the one has the ball, and three is denying. It's very aggressive. The minute three steps across that three-point line, that's number two's immediate cue to back door. And then that option could be there. And then, of course, we fill. Oftentimes where this play works is the second pass. So, for example, let's look at that again. Let's assume two, uh, the red two is overplaying, so four and, the, and number three who have the ball, they both are on the same page. They know the rule is, is that an overplay is immediate backdoor. So three knows already that four is going. 
And usually two is going to recover quick enough where that pass can't be made. But here's where you get the opportunity. A lot of times, so as these guys um, go to clear, a lot of times as two is coming up to fill that gap, three is overplaying, and that's when that immediate back door happens and you get that pass in for the layup. That is oftentimes where that opportunity comes for that back door situation. The other one is when we have a dribble at. So again, let's assume, now we're going to go to the other side, let's assume uh, that two, that three here starts to dribble at five with the ball. That no matter, even if number one is back or up, doesn't matter. When that starts to happen at number three is starting to dribble at five, that's five's cue to do a back door. And then three will dribble all the way over. And then we have the fill process that goes in. Okay? So anytime you do a dribble at, so if it came back this way, dribble at, that's cute. You have to commit. There's no fake. You have to commit to going through that backdoor overplay. And then everybody fills just as we see here. So we have uh, a pass. We'll get our defense back lined up here a little bit. Put that other defender in. So if two is playing off and we make that pass, we do a V cut and we cut through looking for the ball. Obviously we wanna throw it there if we can. It's not open. We have one coming up to fill. Let's say that that's aggressive, so there's another back door that could happen, and that means two is still coming all the way up here. Um, it's playing off a little bit, so we can make that pass. These other guys, whenever there's chaos, you just fill the open spots, and you get right back into your set. So it's pass and cut and fill, with the two overplays being... The defender's up already. I can't make the pass. I backdoor. Or the situation where you start to get a dribble at. And that's an automatic cue, again, to backdoor. And then the others will fill as planned. So let's get the defense out of there. And let's look again at our setup one time. So we're in a 50. Remember, we're in a 50 where we got everybody. Positions don't matter. Just everybody fills. Get five out wide. Nobody touching the three-point line. And we learned the pass and cut and fill. And we learned uh, the dribble at. And we learned that if a defender is over the three-point line overplaying us, that's an immediate back door and we fill. There's another play here where if the um, ball goes to um, four here, and let's say four uh, starts to attack the rim, and they drive, and they're driving, and they get all the way down here, and they get stuck. They can't finish. They could have a skip pass typically in that direction or in that direction. But anytime we see somebody driving like that, we go and fill the spot. And we fill that spot so that if they get in trouble and they have nowhere to go out, they can do basically a reverse pivot and kick the ball right back out. And then we go through our fill process. Same thing happens. So if the person passes, they will get a V-cut, cut through. This person's filling. This person's filling. Let's say they pass here, get a V-cut, come back to the ball looking for it. This person's filling. This person's filling, this person's filling. Let's say this person takes off and starts driving, but they get stuck. Then this person's filling to be the bailout. Everybody's kind of filling their role. Can't go anywhere, so we bail out, and then we refill. So now we know overplay is immediate backdoor. We know dribble at is a backdoor, and other than that, it's a pass and cut. Now let's look at the pass and pick away. 